Okay, hello. I'm Ryan Williams. I'm going to talk about work I was a part of at Mount Sinai in New York for uh, parallel analysis of single cell RNA seq data. Uh, so, that when I talk about single cell data, I'm basically starting from the gene expression matrix, which is like a giant sparse matrix of cells by genes with just a number uh, indicating how much each cell in a population was expressing a given gene. We have increasingly large data sets of this form. Um, there's a whole, you know, like uh, upstream processing part involving going from reads to these matrices that I'm just assuming is standard. I'm not uh, covering that here, but um, so there's, yeah, the, the largest public data set is like 2 million cells um, by 30,000 genes. So these, uh, they're, they're starting to be pretty large. And if you want to do some of the standard processing on these things, um, it's gets unwieldy on large cloud instances. They still kind of take a long time. There's a lot of opportunity to uh, speed up the analysis and um, scale it out to larger data sets. Uh, most of the things people are doing with these are different kinds of filtering and normalization or clustering to identify cell types. Uh, there are a wealth of tools in Python and R that are popular and people use that do this effectively, but um, as I mentioned, they can kind of struggle with the increasingly large data set sizes. Uh, the data is often persisted in various text-based formats or uh, different schemas embedded in HDF5, uh, which I will talk more about. Um, one of the first things that we did in order to scale these analyses better was to use an alternative to HDF5 called ZAR. That is like a new uh, project from the, in, uh, in the Python ecosystem, but it has implementations in several languages at this point. Um, both HDF5 and ZAR essentially give you ways to store uh, multi-dimensional arrays and even groups of them in specific like schema kind of hierarchies. Um, HDF5 stores them in single large files on some underlying file system. Um, and that poses some problems for parallel writing them, uh, for sure. And it's also a bit difficult to read from these files in parallel. Um, and when I say in parallel, I mean either just using many cores on one machine or, uh, you know, like hundreds or thousands of machines in a cluster all pointing at the same data. But that's also been uh, chunked and spread across machines to support that kind of access pattern. Um, it, HDF5 is also hard to use directly in uh, like public clouds just as an artifact of how it's implemented. Um, so ZAR is a lot simpler and solves some of those problems. It basically materializes the chunks of these uh, multidimensional arrays as individual files on some underlying file system like abstraction, uh, which can be your, your local disk or a cloud store. Uh, or even like a database that's just storing binary blobs and exposing them uh, in this kind of structured format. Um, you know, it comes with some simple metadata. It tells you where the, uh, tells you about the shapes of the arrays that uh, the chunks are representing, and the chunks themselves are just like, you know, uh, gzip or other compression codecs applied to the literal uh, subset of the higher dimensional array. Um, so we added support for that to uh, ScanPy, which is a popular single cell tool, and we're able to use that downstream with various parallel processing frameworks. Uh, Dask in particular is uh, a easy way to get multi-core or like you know across machine parallelism in Python. Uh, we also made a library called Zappy that. Uh, basically does the same thing for different uh, other parallelization frameworks like Spark, Beam, and Pyren, which are interesting, you can look up. They basically just give you ways to uh, take code that's written against a NumPy array interface and uh, parallelize the operations that you're doing to those arrays. Uh, so we um, added it to the data storage layer of ScanPy, which is called AndData, which is like a, a way to have excuse me, annotated data matrices with metadata about rows and columns. Um, here you have some uh, simple code example of basically reading some single cell data that's stored in the ZAR format and then doing like parallel processing on it using, using Dask. <clears throat> uh, 
uh, some you know obligatory benchmarks. You can find I think my poster is still up, or you can talk to me afterwards. But the point is, like, <clears throat> as we expect in these kinds of things, like you, you often pay a cost for parallelizing. Like maybe the total amount of CPU you use is like four times higher, but you're able to use hundreds of cores potentially, so you can speed up your runtimes by uh, you know arbitrary amounts, kind of. And we're working on uh, pushing that parallelization further downstream in the analysis pipeline to more complicated algorithms like clustering. Today it works for simple preprocessing uh, phases. So that's all. Thanks.